Bible says in verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me. You see that term? Now don't let that bother you. You underline every time Jesus said, Father, those that thou gavest me. The Bible says salvation is of the Lord. God's the author and finisher of our salvation. Now you hang on now. Hang on. Fashion your pew belt, whatever. Bible says in verse 6, Thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. At least they knew what the word of God was. You can't have responsive meetings and uh, readings in Baptist and Methodist and Pentecostal because none of the Bible says the same thing. Holl amen right there. So they don't know what the word of God is. Why do you go to church? Bible tells why some folk go to church. Paul said some folk go to church, they want the ears tickled, they want the back scratched. And Isaiah said, a lot of folk go around the house of God, and my prophets are like dumb dogs that won't bark. I wouldn't give you two cents for a dog that wouldn't bark, and I'd kill one that barked at nothing. So God expresses. Why do you go to church? The Bible says in the last days, in the book of Timothy, they'll pile up preachers and teachers. They'll pile them up. One after another, pile them up. Seminary professors, they'll pile them up. They'll stack one on top of the other. Teachers having itching ears. Verse 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me, Are of thee. Verse 4 8, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. Stop right there. When the preacher gets up, as Jesus said, I have given them the words, Father, that you gave me, and they believed it, they received it. Every preacher worth his salt will give the same words to the congregation that Jesus Christ gave to his believers. Notice here, verse 8, the words which thou gavest me, they have received them. What does the Bible say about when you hear the gospel? John says, to as many as received him, Jesus, to them, God gave the power to become what? The sons of God, even to them who believe on his name. Not a word of John 17 talks to a sinner. Follow me. And have known surely that I came out from thee, that I came from heaven, and they have believed that thou, God, that thou didst send me. Now what does the Bible say in Hebrews? The Bible says in Hebrews that a man must believe that God is. A man doesn't believe in God. God, had, God hadn't got a thing for him. And God says if a man believes that God is, and God says I am a rewarder, of them who diligently seek me. Now, wait a minute. That's not talking about salvation. But who seek the things of God. Let me ask you this. Is there a person in this building that sat down at one point in your life, your life, your life, I'm talking like a redneck, your life. 
Is there a person anywhere in your life sat down and wrote out when and where you were going to get saved? Raise your hand. I'd like, I'd like to know about it. I never met one. Follow me. Bible says, verse 9, I pray for them. Who's he praying for? Jesus said, I pray for them who've received the words, Father, that you gave me and I gave them. Here's your salvation right here. That's the moment you trusted God. That's when you believed. All right, pick it up, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Now we are told in Romans to pray for those in authority above us. But when you pray, you wasting your time praying for the world. Jesus said, I pray not for the world. I wonder how much time people <laughs> waste. Said, oh God, pray for the peace, pray for the peace, pray for the world. Pray. You better pick out someone you know and pray for that individual to get saved. The Peace Corps and all the intentions of man and the intentions of men thousands of years have tried to do what God said he couldn't do. And that's bring about peace on earth. There's going to be only one time when peace will surround this earth. And that'll be when the Prince of Peace comes. The Lord in Revelation 19 sets up a kingdom and rules the earth with a rod of iron. Look at this. Verse 9, I pray for them. That's those in verse 8. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. There's that word. Father, those that thou gave me. Have you figured out by now who those whom God has given to Jesus? You got any idea who they are? You got any idea by now who we are? We're believers. God's the author of your salvation, honey. I was born dead as a doornail. Now let me just say right here about something else. I've had, had a man one time that knew better than to do this. But he was young, wet behind the ears. And when I was a young preacher and I didn't understand something, and I couldn't put it together. You see, the Bible says, rightly divide the word of truth. John 17 says, thy word is true, the word of God. You hear men saying today, well, I remember when I sought the Lord and I found the God. And well, I got news for you. God ain't never been lost. I, I mean, come on. You know, I've, I've said that too. But I had a man stand in this book at one time, and seven times he said, I got saved of my own free will. All over North Carolina, you got what you call free will Baptist. There's no such thing as a free will Baptist. There's no such thing as a free will. Oh, we have a will. But when the Bible, hey, do you know what total depravity is? I preached on it, Brother John preached on it, Brother Barry. Do you have any idea what total depravity is? 
Romans 3 and Romans 6, Romans 5 talks about man is, is born dead. John 3 says man is already condemned. The Bible says from the top of man's head to the bottom of his feet, he's dead in trespasses and sin. Well, if a man is dead, and he is, then his will's depraved too. Are you still with me? I got you too deep now. All you're doing is saying, Isaiah said, all we like sheep have gone astray, and there's none that seeketh after God. And Baptist preachers get up and say, well, you have a choice. <laughs> Would you please show me that in the Bible? God's already made that choice and gave everyone to Jesus Christ. Now, since you, in the mind of God, have been saved and given to Jesus Christ, why are you doubting your salvation? If there's a point in time when you trust it and you believe and you receive the truth, then why don't you anchor your soul in the Lord's prayer? Follow me. Verse 10, all and all mine of thine. That's to say, that's redeemed. That's all that the Father gave the Lord. Verse 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these, that's us, believers, are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep them through thine own name, those whom thou, read the next four words, thou, out loud, thou hast given that they may be one, as we are. Well, you have all the religions today trying to, we all want all the religions to come together. God has never had that in mind. The only oneness in the Word of God is our oneness in Jesus Christ. They may be one as we are. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou, read the next two words, gavest me. I have what? What's the next word? Can't, well, say it again. I've kept them. And none of them is lost. None of them is lost. Any church today that teaches a man can be born again and lost is not of God. Did you read what Jesus just said? None of them are lost. But wait a minute, one, the son of perdition, that's Judas. But I've heard Baptist preachers argue with the fact that Judas could have been saved. And I've heard them argue that if Judas had gotten saved, Jesus would not have had to go to the cross. Good, good, good night. <laughs> How many has Jesus lost? None. What are you worried about losing your salvation? I, I can tell you what you're worried about. You're worried about you not doing what God told you to do. See, you, see God told you to be baptized. And God said, well, a man robbed God. And the devil comes up and says, hey, you're not a tither, and you robbed God, and, and you can't be saved. Well, God didn't tell you that. You never will have assurance of your salvation like God wants you to have until you become an obedient child of God. But the devil will come up and say, hey, you're not saved. I'm telling you how, what to believe and how to get rid of some doubts. The Bible says, verse 13, and now come I to thee. Verse 14, he repeats himself, I have given them thy word, and the world, thy word and the world hath hated them. This world hates the word of God. Did you hear what the Bible just said? 
Why do you think the great apostasy, the last sign in the book of Timothy that God said before the end of time, the great apostasy 